Hello there, welcome to the Golf Scholar channel. Today we're going to look, take a look here at Sam Snead. Um, I have some old footage of him from down the line and in front. We'll go ahead and just play his swing while we're waiting here. But what we're going to do is just take a look at some of the traits and characteristics that he used in his full swing that made him such a great golfer. And I'll tell you what, you know, Jerry West once said that Sam Snead was the best athlete that he had ever came across. You know, there's old stories of him where they said he could stand in a doorway and kick the top frame just to give you an idea of his flexibility and range of motion here. So let's get started. We'll go ahead and back him up to setup. Now, some things to note if you're not aware about how he went about playing. You can see he's in a heavy draw stance here. For instance, he would pull his right foot way back of the left. That would set him up in a trapped-like style. Because what he would try to do would basically just pull it back on line. Um, he said that he found out that he could do that every time. So there's really no reason to fight anything that you can execute every time. Um, you know, this is a game of repeating your swing and repeating shot after shot. So regardless of how you want to go about it, um, his idea was the best way to achieve that was to pull it. So we won't be able to take a look exactly what club he's using. But if you look at old pictures of him, he, a lot of times he'll be sitting there with a one and a half wood. And if you're new to golf, you're probably asking yourself, what is a one and a half wood? But back in the day, they would actually make those. So you would also come across pictures of him with a two wood. And the reason he would have a one and a half wood and a two wood is it had a little bit more loft than the driver. Because remember, he's trying to de-loft the club and pull it. So when you take the one and a half wood or the two wood, by the time he would get back to impact, the true loft of the driver would be, uh, or the true loft of the club he was using would be actually similar to a driver at that moment. So you can see he's positioned himself on the left side of the tee. He's going to stand in a heavily closed stance. He's going to use a one and a half and a two wood. And instead of sending this ball off on a straight line, he's going to try to pull it back into the fairway. Actually, try is a bad word because he will pull it back into the fairway almost every time. All right. So let's see how he gets started. Now, he's very good at creating a smooth takeaway and allowing things to flow off of that. So what you're going to notice here is he will trigger his right knee as far as kicking that in the hands will forward press a little and if you hear him in his words everything goes back together you don't just let it sit there so that way things can move smoothly and all together in the takeaway so here we go you'll see he kind of taps the club down there kicks the right knee hands and everything move back together you can see how active the legs are already this early in the swing. He does not want to stand there frozen in his lower body. He wants everything to act athletically and move together. Right knee kicks in. Everything turns together. We'll look here on the right. You can see the hands kind of push down a little. There he goes bumping his hip. Right leg kicks in a little. And there we go. Everything together. You can see here the club staying really low. There's no inclination as far as picking that up. He's letting this just drag back body and club. So we'll go ahead and wind up to the top. You can see here this is a full wind up. Now back in the day this was common practice to allow the lead foot to come off the ground. That way you're not tying up your lower body and allowing it full function. So let's we'll go here on the right, go ahead and wind him up to the top. You can see he has not slid off the ball. He's made a humongous turn here. And if you notice his right leg, see how that's kind of leaning in at this position. You know, he's in a really good position as far as being centered and behind it without swaying. And then this, this is an absolute full coil. For instance, when we look at his shoulders here, they're definitely way past the parallel mark. The hips have wound up freely, but yet still very much under control. And everything's kind of positioned off 
this right leg with the, it, with the weight being on the inside of this foot. You can see the heavy leg action here on the right also with the left leg, allowing the freedom of that. Left arm has a nice stretch up. You see the club is getting past parallel at this moment, and that's just mainly due to how well he has turned and the freedom he's allowed in his body to get there. Now here we can also see the stretch up the left side, right arm supporting the club really well. And you can definitely tell there's nothing being kind of manipulated here. He's arrived at this position very easily and very comfortably. And from here he'll be able to hit his little pull shot. Now he goes to transition. Left leg will open up as we see here on the right side. Now he would talk about the idea of riding a horse. Right, so that's what he's speaking of right here. See how his legs have braced. For instance, he's created a nice uh, base here and nice footing into the ground. He'll be able to get some vertical force as he goes to unwind from the ground up and fire his hips. So here on the left, we'll kind of get him in the same position. Okay, right now he's kind of in the leg braced mode. Now here... You can see the club's just pretty much falling comfortably. It's going to, it's on a good plane line as far as where he started and where he's trying to go as far as a slight pull across it. Here you can see there's really no inclination to use the hands yet. The club has a nice lag on it, so he's going to be able to use or be able to create a lot of speed. All right, let's go ahead and get him to impact. Now here you can see the left leg foot plants, knees brace, now the left leg starting to post. So this hip is firing around, right? See the shoulder action here is in a nice launch as far as for driving the ball. And right there we can see the left leg post for the timing of the strike. So he's built a good column here. As he goes around it, that's what he'll finish on as all the weight flows to the left side. So we'll take a look here on the left. Club's falling in nicely. Body, arms, hands are all working together. You can see where his right arm is in close. Left arm out front and taut. And from here, he'll be able to just slightly pull across it and get the ball flight that he wants. But you can see here... There's somewhat of a little hold off action. I'm sure this was to help prevent too much pulling within the stroke. That way he can kind of combat and counter that. For instance, we can see the back of his left hand is what I'm speaking of, where he's just not allowing his hands just to roll over too hardly and too quickly. Here he has a nice little soft finish. You know, nothing's really too tense or trying to like hold something too hard. So everything's just soft and nice. Now we're just going to play both of these swings kind of in slow motion and take a look at them in real time here, or in slow motion time per se. But the whole thing flows together so nicely, that's really the main, uh, or that was really one of his key factors as far as get the timing of the stroke. Now, when you can win as long as he has, uh, and also win as often as he has, you're definitely doing something right. I mean, this guy was winning PGA Tour events all the way into his mid-50s, especially at Greenbrier. I mean, you could hardly ever beat him there. And if you look, if you go back and look at some of the ways that he learned to play, you know, he grew up in the Virginias. He said he would go around picking up apples on a stick and throwing them. What I mean by that is, for instance, if there was an apple on the bottom of this stick per se instead of a shaft when he would go to the top you know he would cut out the core large enough where the apple could slide more near his hands you've probably seen training aids like that today I know skills golf makes one where there's like a wiffle ball on the end of the stick and as you're at the top you know the wiffle ball will be now trapped more near the grip of the club and for him, he would try to throw the apple, let's say, if this was his target. We'll make a little red X. 
he would now try to throw the apple off the end of the stick like as far, instead of hitting the ball at his target okay if he was early the apple would go way over here for instance with probably not as much speed and distance on it and if he's late the apple would pull more left and again not as much speed and distance on it so he learned that if he could throw that apple straight not only would it be going down the line but he would also be able to get the most distance from it after it was thrown now, I know this sounds like a silly way to learn golf but <laughs> you look at all the wins he's had I wouldn't call anything he does silly all right now let's look over here on the right you know he also attributed a lot of his good play to squirrel hunting he said when he grew up he said it helps him with his aiming so this guy has a unique background uh, I absolutely love his swing because he really just focuses on rhythm and the timing of it that's something that's very difficult to achieve day in day out and it also kind of clears the mind of mechanical things he would talk about humming a waltz tune as he played now waltz tunes like old like little elevator music kind of deal where that would kind of just set the pace and rhythm of how he liked to swing so he would just go about humming that would kind of note where he was in his swing as he hummed and yeah I mean this guy swings so cool and I wish that uh, more people today could take some of the traits and elements that he uses mainly just the freedom of it uh, you know how he gets starting allowing everything going together and you know not being fearful of trying to lock this lower body you know you see so many players now today that are afraid to even like move their knees and hips for whatever reason I guess they've just been preached so hard that that's the right thing to do but you look here uh, his lower body has all the freedom at once and it's never going to tie him or bound him up as far as executing a rhythmic stroke and a full swing without any limitations so yeah man that's slamming sammy this guy was awesome i'll go ahead and end this video and hopefully you can pick up on some things that he was doing that can help you in your own game thank you now